We've been drawing a bunch of force diagrams, and as we're drawing these force diagrams, I've been pretty careful to make sure that you're making them balanced if there is no acceleration. So in other words, if the object is at rest or at constant speed, we're making sure that right equals left and top equals bottom. And the reason we do that is because when we start adding numbers, which is what we're going to do right now, you need to be able to equate certain sides in order to solve out a force diagram. So what we're going to do is make these now quantitative by adding numbers. And I'm going to do two examples, and then we'll have two more to work on in class tomorrow. Okay, in both of these examples, you should have in the packet of papers um, that say quanti quantitative force diagrams. I'm going to do the first one right now. It tells us a book with a mass of 5 kilograms is at rest on a table with a weight of 200, four, sorry, 400 newtons. Find the normal force on the table by the floor and the mass of the table. First thing we need to do is draw a diagram. So here's our table on the floor. And then we have a book resting on the table. So there's my book. And it's a word problem, so we want to list our given and our find. Given. It tells us that the book, so I'm going to call that mass book, has a mass of 5 kilograms. It also tells us that the table has a weight of 400 newtons. Remember that mass and weight are not the same thing. Weight is the force of gravity. It's a force because it's measured in newtons. So we know that Fg for the table is 400 newtons. And the only other thing it gives us, it actually, I'm sorry, it doesn't give us anything else. What we're looking for is the normal force on the table. I'll call that Fnt and the mass of the table. First thing we want to do is draw a force diagram for each of these objects. So start with the book. The book only has two forces acting on it. It's got the force of gravity going straight down, as every object on Earth would have, and it's got the table pushing up on it. So that would be a contact force by the table. The table is going to have the force of gravity going straight down, Newton's third law tells us that this contact force on the book by the table will have an equal but opposite contact force on the table by the book. So if the table pushes up on the book, the book will push down on the table. And again, the length of this contact force should be equal to the length of this contact force. The only other thing touching the table is the floor, that's your surface. So there's a normal force going up. And I know that this normal force needs to be long because the length of this contact force plus the length of this gravitational force added together have to equal the normal force. Again, I know this because my forces are in balance. The book is at rest on the table. The table is at rest on the floor. So this is what my force diagram would look like for each of the two objects. Now what we have to do is start seeing what we can solve for. What do we know based off what we were given? Well, we already know that the weight of the table is 400 newtons. So I'm going to just add that into the force diagram. 400 newtons. I know that the mass of the table is 5 kilograms. I can very easily find weight using Fg equals mg. So mass of the book is 5 kilograms times my g, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, equals 5 times 9.8, 49 newtons. So Fg for the book is 49 newtons. I didn't put a negative with this 9.8 newtons per kilogram because my Fg points straight down. When we start really taking into account a uh, direction, so when forces are not so much balanced, then the negative would be taken care of by the fact that this points down, 
and that's why it's okay to leave this as 9.8. So the force of gravity for the book, which is also the weight, is a total of 49 newtons. So the negative again is taken care of if we look at the fact that this points down. Because the book is at rest, I know that my top force is equal to my bottom force. So if the weight of the book is 49 newtons, then this contact force must also be 49 newtons. Because of Newton's third law, this contact force on the book by the table is equal to the contact force on the table by the book. So because those two FCs are equal, this contact force is also 49 newtons. The only force left to find is the normal force, and that's what we were looking for in our given find. Top has to equal the bottom added together. So my normal force for the table will equal the contact force plus Fg. So this equals 49 newtons plus 400 newtons. I'm running out of space, I'm sorry. So this would equal 449 newtons. Only one sig fig, so my normal force would be approximately 400 newtons with rounding. You only look at the number uh, next to whatever you're rounding to, so the 4 will round it down to 400 as opposed to up to 500. Now the second thing it's asked us for is the mass of the table. We know that weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. So mass would equal weight divided by g. So for the table, 400 newtons divided by 9.8 newtons per kilogram gives us 40.81 keeps on going kilograms. One sig fig, mass of the table is approximately 40 kilograms. So force diagrams with numbers are going to start adding a layer of complexity to what we've been doing. Main things to remember are Newton's first and third law when solving these out. The first law tells us that if there is no acceleration, your forces are balanced, so top equals bottom, right equals left. Newton's third law tells you that if there are two objects, then your contact force between those two objects is equal but opposite. So you need to be able to recognize when those two laws are relevant and apply those to the problems in order to easily and successfully solve a force diagram. I'm going to do one more example and we'll do the other two in class tomorrow as practice. The next example is the fourth problem on your handout. It tells us that a student is standing on a table exerting a 400 newton force on the table. If the table has a weight of 800 newtons, find the mass of the table, the mass of the student, and the normal force on the table. So this diagram, we've got our ground. Table is on the ground, and the student is standing on the table. Given, we know that the student is exerting a 400 newton force on the table. So that's going to be contact force equal to 400 newtons. We also know that the table's weight is 800 newtons, so Fg for the table is 800 newtons. And we're not given anything else, but we're looking for the mass of the table, the mass of the student, and the normal force on the table. So let's draw the force diagrams for each of those. We'll start with the student. Student is standing on the table, so the table is pushing up on the student, and that would be a contact force, as opposed to a normal force, since my surface for the whole system is the floor. And then Earth is pulling down on the student. They're at rest, so the weight would be equal to the contact force. And then for the table, The student is exerting a 400 newton force down on the table that has to be equal to the 
force going up on the student by the table. So going down, we have a contact force, which should be equal in length to this contact force. So I drew that poorly, make this a little bit longer. The table also has a weight, so FG going down, and then I drew this really badly. Going up would be a normal force. The length of this should equal the length of these two added together. So it tells us that the contact force on the table by the student is 400 newtons. So if I fill that in, we know that this FC is 400 newtons. Because of Newton's third law, this contact force is equal to this contact force. So this is also 400 newtons. Because the student is at rest, Fg is equal also to 400 newtons. We knew that the weight of the table that was given was 800 newtons. So of these five forces, the only one unknown is the normal force. Again, because of Newton's first law, the table is not accelerating, so top has to equal bottom two added together. So normal force would equal the contact force plus the weight of the table. So 400 newtons plus 800 newtons means the normal force would be equal to 1,200 newtons. So that's solving out the force diagram. Now let's go back to see what the problem actually asks for. Mass of the table, mass of the student, and normal force on the table. So I just solved that the normal force for the table was equal to 1,200 newtons, only one sig fig, so approximately 1,000 newtons. Mass of the table is going to be equal to the weight of the table divided by g. So mass of the table equals 800 newtons divided by 9.8 newtons per kilogram. This equals 81.63 keeps on going kilograms. One sig fig, the mass of the table, is about 80 kilograms. And then the mass of the student will equal the weight of the student, 400 newtons, divided by g, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. 400 divided by 9.8 is equal to 40.81, keeps on going, kilograms. So one sig fig, the mass of the student is about 40 kilograms. Again, the main thing to remember with these problems is Newton's third law and Newton's first law. So Newton's third law telling us what forces have to be equal if you're dealing with more than one object. And in these problems, you do deal with more than one object. And then Newton's first law, which tells us that if there is no acceleration, your forces are balanced. So top equals bottom and right equals left. Tomorrow in class, we'll do two more practice, and then we'll eventually start adding angles to all of these uh, force diagrams.